service and song to the Lord. And, uh, everybody's looking happy today. Looking good. The weather's really nice, and uh, we are here to worship God in spirit and in truth. There are invariably times when you have brought a visitor to the body of Christ. And then you know what sometimes they say, they walk in, they sit down, they kind of look around and they go, where are your instruments? Hmm. Right? Has that ever happened to you? Yeah. You want to know where? Where is your, where is your piano? Where is your, uh, where are your drum set, guitars? Hmm. Now you know what happens there. Is you know when you tell people you're from the Church of Christ, they say, Oh, you those little folks over there believe there ain't nobody else right in the Bible but yourselves, right? They ain't trying to watch that don't play musical instruments, right? That's what we're known for, right? So, in the night, it's not often. They don't even talk about those things, right? <clears throat> but there comes a time when it is important. Maybe in the roughly seven years that I have been here, maybe this is the third time. And I've really even taken the time to, to focus on this particular topic. But it's because we're talking about things in the Church of Christ. We're about to turn our attention to why it is we do the things here in our worship service that we do. So I figured I'll start off with the doozy. Why don't we use musical instruments? <coughs> musical instruments are wonderful, Leroy. Uh, I mean, some of our best singers out there, you know, that we really appreciate the the great guitarists out there, you know, the B.B. Kings and the Eric Clapton's and the uh, Prince, that was so, and B.B. King too. Uh, 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 I mean, they could really do something on a guitar, Eddie Van Halen, uh, the great drummers of our time, Ringo. You know, we, we, we appreciate a person who can play a piano, Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder, they, they play and they can't even see. Right, right. Huh? Right. And we just figured, why wouldn't, why wouldn't you, Carol, take the talents that God has given us and use all of our talents to the glory of God? He's given me this ability. I might as well use it for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. So you know what? Let's introduce it into our worship service. Hey, the only problem is, I am sure you are wonderful at playing the piano. I am sure that you can really get down on the guitar and, and maybe even Mac can bring in a, oh, uh, you play the saxophone, Mac? Mac can bring in the saxophone and we can get down in here. And it can sound good and, and Bill can lead us with his great voice and uh, uh, backed up by Valerie. I mean, they can tear something up. Huh? Valerie and Bill, woo, wow. Right? A little musical accompaniment. Here's the problem, Brother Birch. God didn't ask for it. Amen. That's the answer. I really can sit down, right? God did not ask for it. <coughs> Here's the kind of follower of Christ that I am. Claudette, it's very simple. Whatever God tells me to do, I do. If God tells me not to do something, I don't do it. Simple as that. Here, here, here's, here's the problem, Gail, we run into. When we read something in the Bible and we decide that God really doesn't know what he wants. Huh? That's our problem. When we, we figure that it, with mankind, we have the ability to expand upon God's word. Is that like, for instance, you know what? Uh, God doesn't really know what he wants. So if God put in the Bible, and Jocelyn, God said, you know what? I would like you to paint your walls white. And we get up and we start painting our walls white, right? And we're done, but then somebody raises up their hand, and they say, you know what? I bet those walls would look really, really good if they were green. And someone may actually argue and say, when the person says, let's paint the walls green, someone may raise their hand and say, well, God didn't say that you couldn't paint them green. Mm. 
But God already said, pay them well. Right? You see where we get in kind of trouble? God didn't say. But if He did say, we got our answer. And therein lies the problem, brothers and sisters, with me as the questions. A lot of people say that God didn't say. That God gave us plenty of examples in the Bible of where He did tell us how He wanted us to worship. I would love nothing more, Ernestine, than if we could bring musical instruments in here. I really believe we could. We could probably get down. But there is something pretty powerful, pretty powerful about the voices of God lifting up and singing in a purity. Amen. Ernestine, did you know that our God is a pure God? Amen. Did you know that for as great as God is, God is very simplistic? And God made us simplistic. And what I want you to hear is I don't want you to hear maybe the typical sermon that you've heard before, <coughs> Carl, where people just get into the pulpit of the Church of Christ, and what they do is they begin to land base, they begin to really put people down and talk about people going to hell. Hey, can I tell you something? That's not what I'm here to tell you. In fact, let me step out and say this. Carl, I'm not God. Mac, I'm not God. I don't know exactly how God is going to judge things, so I'm not going to make that statement. What I'm going to say is this. Do I think it's a matter of faith that you're going to go to hell if you use musical instruments in your worship service? To be perfectly honest, I just simply don't know. And I'm actually not even, not even trying to judge that one way or the other. Here's what I know. I know what God has told me to do, and that's what I'm going to follow. And that's what I'm going to share with you. Let's leave it up to God, Church of Christ, to decide if other congregations that decide to use musical instruments are going to hell. Right? <laughs> let, let, let God make that determination. Right? Let's be able to explain. Here's what we want to do. Ben, we want to be able to explain why it is we do what we do. Right. We want to be able to tell the world, here's why we sing with the melody of our heart and don't use musical instruments. Okay. We don't need to expound upon that. We need to allow everybody to make their decisions. We need to teach them right. And then you know what? We need to continue to do what we do by example. Yeah. All right? All right. So that's what I'm telling you this morning. So many of you might not have known that if you ever studied the temple, you know, the people of God, they used to worship first in their homes. The men of the household had the responsibility, Logan, of making sure his family served God, making sure that in the patriarchal age that the elders would talk to the men and the men would come back to their own individual families and to the family household, the unit, we would worship God. That, that changed a little bit. What happened, Gracie, was that as Moses came on the scene and God recognized his people were growing and they needed more guidance and leadership, Moses gave or God gave Moses some ten commandments and then some 600 plus commandments that he wanted the children to follow in order to know. He, he wanted people to know. He wanted his people to know how to worship him and how to serve him. He, he gave laws that govern the relationship between man and man. He gave laws that govern the relationship between God and man. He gave laws that govern how we were to worship him. Those are the, every single law that you look at will fall into one of those three categories. If you pull out those things that God talked about, how to worship uh, Him, some of the things that He told us were very, very specific. We uh, had to walk three steps and then turn right. It's amazing that when God gave the commandments to Moses, that in none of those commandments did he ever say in the worship service that you were to use musical instruments. Mm. You will not find that anywhere. <clears throat> so you say, well, where did they first come? Well, let me explain. When we had the tabernacle, you remember when the children were in the wilderness? Mm -hmm. After having spent 430 years, and we're going to get to the Bible, don't worry, you know how I feel about people who get up and talk and don't show the Bible. Right. They spent about 430 years in captivity. And then when God got 
tired and he heard his people cry out, let us go, we want to be free. God sent a man named Moses to free his children family. After 430 years, he finally delivered his people up. And, and he was going to take them, Valerie, into the land that flowed with milk and honey. That land was called Canaan. But you remember he told them to spy out the land? And they came back and they lied to God and they said that it's too uh, fortified for us, but we are like grass hoppers before giants. You remember all that story, right? And for every day that they spied, he added a year. So they spent 40 years in the desert. What should have been, Eric, a couple of weeks of a trip to get from where they were to the land of Canaan? 40 years. And in that 40 years, they still needed to understand the concept of serving God. So they came up with the concept of the tabernacle. And they would get together in tents, and they would worship God, and they would serve God. But Pam, can I tell you something? In those tents, they didn't have musical instruments. Mm. So it came a point in time that as things got a little bit more complex, as the children of God learned and understood more about serving God, we know that God had a conversation. And he had a conversation with David. And in this conversation with David, where he was telling David, David, uh, you're going to be a great man. You're going to have an everlasting dynasty. Your people shall be great. David was excited. David was a man of God. David said, Lord, can I build your first house? And God said, Olivia, no, you can't. Mm -hmm. And David said, but I'm a man of God. I, I'm your man. I, I've done all these things. And God said, you know what? I'm a purist. Mm -hmm. I used you exactly for the purpose that I wanted you, right. and that was to kill the Amorites right. and to kill the Amalekites mm -hmm. and to kill the all the ites. <laughs> Jebusites, right? Yeah. We can keep going on and on and on with all the ites. I want you to kill them, but you know what? My hand is pure. See, I need pure blood. Yeah. Your blood is stained, even though I told you to do that. Mm. Your blood is stained. We are about to build a prototype of the Church of Christ. Mm. That's why David could not build the house because his blood was stained yeah. with enemy blood. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. You thought it was just because? God never does anything just because. Blood was stained. God only works with pure blood. So you know what? He couldn't build it because he had blood on his hands. He said, but I will build it under your son Solomon. And what was this? This was the temple of God. Mm -hmm. So Solomon built the temple of God. It was beautiful. It had many parts and portions to it. It had inner courts, outer courts, court for women, court for Gentiles, holies, holies of holies, because all these things represented something. Mm -hmm. All of these things had meaning. And they lived and they worshipped and they worshipped in the temple. And then David, this great man, came up with this concept. David was very skillful. You remember that? David, uh, remember when Saul had bad nerves? He used to send young David in and he used to play the harp and he used to settle Saul down. Mm -hmm. Well, David was a master at instruments. So David, he had a good idea, Gracie. You know what that idea was? Let's use musical instruments. Let's play music <coughs> and instruments to the, to, the, to the glory of God. Right? And here's what you hear. Watch this. Leroy, I want you to listen to what I'm about to say. When you're talking to somebody, about musical instruments. The first thing they will say to justify it is what? David, David used musical instruments mm -hmm. in the worship. Isn't that what they're saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, here's what I want you to say. 
Did David live in the Christian dispensation or the Mosaic dispensation? He lived what? The Mosaic. Are we worshiping God under the Mosaic? Are we worshiping Him under the law? No. We're worshiping Him under what? The Christian dispensation. So that's problem number one. Mm -hmm. Problem number two, most people absolutely do not know what they're talking about. Because guess what? They did not play musical instruments in the worship service of God. They played musical instruments in the temple, but they didn't play it in the holies. You say in the holy place. Why? What are you saying, Brother Darrell? What I'm saying is, when it came time to worship God, the children of Israel would leave the outer court and they would go into the inner court, into the place of holies where they met and worshiped God. Musical instruments that they called for, they were playing on the outer court. The outer court. Were they playing it to God? Yes, they were. Were they honoring God with music? Yes, they were. But it wasn't during the worship service mm. of our Lord. Mm. Huh? People just thought there were musical instruments in the temple. Yes, they were. But they were not in the place where the children worship God. Worship occurred in the place of holiness. When God sent uh, his high priest to sacrifice our sins, then he went into the holies of holy. There were no musical instruments in the holy place. They were on the outside. So when those children were playing, and they were playing in the harp and doing all those other things, it was on the outer court. Gabe, do you know what the outer court represents? It represents the world. So you, so people say, well, you, Bill, you know, you do a whole lot of singing, Bill, and you use musical instruments, Bill. I don't know that that's right. Hmm? And you can say, the last I heard, the last I knew, I didn't compose any songs with musical instruments in the worship service of our God. God has absolutely no problem. No issue with you using musical instruments to worship him, to praise him, to give your talents to him, as long as it is not in the worship service of our Lord and Savior. Are you getting this? Huh? Are you getting this? Get your notes. I want you to know this because this is what you run into. Again, not putting down what people are doing, but trying to make and write the record straight. We need to know why we do what we do here in the Church of Christ. Mm. Sometimes we erroneously go, so I want to show you something. Turn in the book to the book of Amos. Turn to the book of Amos. <clears throat> I know that I'm not doing one of my traditional hellfire and brimstone uh, preachers. <laughs> I'm trying to teach you, right? I'm trying to make sure you know how to give a defense for what it is that we do. Now, <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, let me set this up. Amos was a prophet. Amos was sent to Israel. Remember the children of Israel were split in two places. You had the northern tribe and you had the southern tribe. The northern tribe had a broken dynasty. The northern tribe represented nine and a half of the twelve children. <clears throat> the northern tribe was out of pocket. Carol, you know what I mean by out of pocket? They didn't do anything. They were disobedient. Everything was problematic for the Northern tribe. God got to a point where he was fed up. 
upon him, he was fed up. He sent his men in, his man in Amos, to let the children know in the northern tribe, it's over. We're done. God got so angry that he began to go down a dialogue that would make me feel quite nervous if he was speaking to us here at 909. In Amos chapter 5, I'm just going to read you an excerpt. In Amos chapter 5, beginning in 21, let's read. This is God talking to his children. I hate, I reject your festivals, nor do I delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer up to me burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them. And I will not even look at the peace offerings of your fat men. 23. Take away from me the noise of your songs. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. Did you present to me with sacrifices and grain offerings in the wilderness for 40 years, O house of Israel? You also carried along Sikkoth, your king, and Kainam, your images the star of your gods which you made for yourselves. Therefore, I will make you go into exile beyond Damascus, says the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. Now, I read this to you because I wanted to stop by. Take a look at 23. You can see God is letting them know that he no longer would take these things. He, he no longer would accept those things, right? You know, Eric, when you've gone so far, and you come home and your parents are just absolutely fed up, right? You ever, you ever, got, you ever got to the point where your parents are just all over and over, and eventually they say, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> okay, right? I don't care what you say, what you do, you know you're in trouble now. You never want to get your parents to that point, right? God had gotten to that point. Even the things I told you to do, I don't want them. Hmm. I'm done. But notice what he says. Put this in proper perspective. Because sometimes we use this incorrectly in the church. Mona, sometimes we go to the scripture to use it wrong. Let's look at what God says in verse 23. God said, take away from me, what? The noise of your songs. Right? Did he say take away your songs? He did say don't give me burnt offerings. Right? He, he did say your sacrifice, your assemblies are solemn. <coughs> he didn't say take away your songs. He said take away what? The no. noise of your songs. You know what the noise of your songs were? The drums and the flute and the lyre and all those other things that they had in there. God said, I am sick of it. But guys, God was not talking about what happened in his worship service. He was just talking, period. I don't want to hear it. I'm done with you. He didn't say the beauty. I, I, Gracie, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help us understand the heart of God. I, I'm trying to get you into the mind of God. Leroy, I'm trying to get you into the thought pattern of God. God didn't say, and in your songs, I appreciate uh, 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 the melody. I appreciate the sound. You know what it sounds to me like? Noise. Noise. Look at the word that God choose, chose to use. The noise of your songs. Not only did I not ask for it, but the way I consider it, Stacy, the way I hear it is noise. You know why, Stacy? Because I'm God and I'm pure. 
I'm God and I'm pure. It's going to be funny the people who turn on the YouTube and pick it up right there with their own cheeks and say he's God and he's pure. <laughs> sure. God is saying, I am pure. Can I, can I say something? Even to those of you who are great, Matt, one day I'm coming to hear you play, and I'm sure you can throw down. But can I tell you something? God didn't create that instrument. We created that instrument to sound good to us. God created this instrument to sound good to him. We can't improve upon what God has already made for you understand that? <clears throat> you understand why it's important that when we sing, we sing <coughs> we sing with the heart and the mind and, and, and the tools that God has already given us. He's not interested in the notes. He goes on a little bit further. You read down just a little bit further in verse 6. You know, God's mad at everybody, right? He, he even says in chapter 6, verse 5, he said, for those of you who improve to the sound of the harp, and like David, huh, see that? like David, have composed songs for themselves. I'm tired. You guys are doing stuff for yourselves. This is not for me. If it's for me, do it like I told you to do it. Well, God, I decided I would, I would do this for you. God's not interested in us doing things for him. He's interested in us doing what he told us to do. So what exactly has God told us to do? Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5. <laughs> Chapter 5, God has told us to be filled with the Spirit. Speaking in verse 19, the Bible says, Speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. <coughs> Can I read that again? For those of you who want to know what God has told us, Remember, God told us to paint the walls white. Somebody raised their hand and said, let's paint the walls green. And somebody then said, God didn't say we couldn't paint them green. But here's what God did say. Speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Ernie, I don't believe that my Bible anywhere says speaking to one, speaking and playing musical instruments to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Here it says singing. Is that in your Bibles? Singing. Gail, does that say singing and playing the harp? It just says singing. Singing and making melody. Where do we make the melody? It's right there in your Bible, Ernestine. Singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. Singing and making melody. Singing and making melody. Does that say singing and playing an instrument? Singing and adding noise. And making melody with your heart. So Eric, what is the instrument that we are to play? It's called our heart. When you go back and do your research, we've talked about this before. Fanny, go back and do your research. I have a book this thick at home. It's the Hebrew Greek Lexicon. Every single word that's in the Bible, I have in both Hebrew and Greek. And it gives me the definition of it. And you know what? When you get to that part that says singing and making melody, there's not a separate word for both of those, for all of those things. It's one word, and it's called salo. P-S-A-L-O, salo. And the word salo means to pick to pluck, to twain, an instrument. And you know what that instrument is? So it's singing and making, it, it's solo harp. Solo harp. 
picking, plucking, twanging, pulling from the heart. Go back and read your Bibles, people. Go to your study. You'll see the word solo right before there. It's picking, it's plucking, it's twanging the heart. Singing and making melody with the heart. Solo heart. So when I get up there with that guitar, I'm getting down, right? Playing the drums, I'm getting down. Blow it into the heart, blow it into the saxophone. I'm getting down. Playing the piano, I'm getting down. God, don't you love what I'm doing? God says, take away the noise. I didn't tell you to add that stuff. I told you exactly what I wanted. I wanted you to sing and make melody in your heart. That's why in the Church of Christ we sing. That's why in the Church of Christ we don't use musical instruments. That is why this minister, I'm not going to say what God thinks about what others are doing who are using musical instruments. What I am saying is that in here, we ain't. Oh, for the, for the camera, I should say, we are not. <laughs> Huh? A musical instrument will never make its way at 909 as long as I am the minister of this congregation. But I'm not judging other folks. I'm saying what I believe God to be saying about the way we are to worship Him. Let others get to the Bible and work it out. But the way I work it out, we are to sing and make melody. The way I work it out is they can go back to David, but they're going back incorrectly. I believe God, no matter how well or poor we sing here at this congregation, I believe when God hears our voices, it's a sweet melody to them. I believe that. Yeah, even us at 909. I know we need some practice on some songs. <laughs> That's what God calls yeah. All I have to give you is the Bible. That's all I have to give you is the Bible. And some will say, well, in Ephesians chapter 5, he wasn't talking about the worship. He was just talking about the gift. But God is the same yesterday, today, and the future. If he tells you how he wants you to sing to him and make melody, do you think it's going to change? <laughs> because in the worship service, huh? we're still understanding the heart of God. Turn with me to Colossians chapter 3. I'll sit down. I'll sit down. Let, let, let's see if we have some consistency here. Let's see if we have some consistency. In Colossians, the chapter is 3. Bible, verses 16, listen to what Paul says to the church in Colossae. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you, with all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing, and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, mm -hmm. singing with thankfulness, what? In your hearts to God. You know why singing with hearts is always next to each other, Bill? Because the word's only one word, it's solid. Making melody and singing from. You get it? Now, if you want to, because I know that I'm causing a controversy with someone. Whoever has the controversy, we are here at 909 Golf Road in Waukegan. That is where we reside. And if anybody in this building or watching the TV chooses to set me straight, please come. I am here every single day. I am here on Wednesdays, and I am here sometimes during the midweek. Call the church 
Make an appointment. We will talk about the Word of God. If I am wrong, show me. But Tracy, I'm pretty versed in this book. You will have to find scriptures outside of this to demonstrate that I'm not telling the truth. Because that's what the Bible is. The only argument you can make is that mankind has decided to add it. You will never find anywhere in the Bible where God tells you to use musical instruments in his worship service. So as a result, we don't. It's just as simple as that. It's not a complex argument, although I can go in and out the Bible with anyone to talk about it. At the end of the day, Valerie, we worship God under the New Testament. We worship God under the Christian dispensation. There's nothing in the Bible that says anything about using musical instruments in our worship. So therefore, we Give me the gospel. Simple, pure, and free. That's one of the things I love about the Church of Christ. We are simple. We simply do what the Bible tells us to do. And if it doesn't tell us to do it, we don't do it. It's just, it's just as simple as that. That makes life easy. Right? I know these things are, are challenging to follow, but that's just how the gospel is. The gospel is how Jesus died how he was buried, and how he was raised on the third day. Those are very, very powerful things. We don't have to go into all this sophistication to become a child of God. All I need to do is believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that I need to participate in the death, the burial, and the resurrection. How do I do that? Hearing the word of God. And it doesn't mean hearing everything from Genesis through Revelation. It means hearing what God did, how Jesus died, how by him dying, his blood washed our sins free. That's here. That's the gospel. After hearing it, do I believe that? Do I believe that, that there was this, this soldier man who, who came down in the form of man and gave up his life and died on the cross and shed his blood and Blood, wash me free. Do I believe that? I believe that. Am I willing to say, hey, as a result of this man uh, being my mediator and, and getting me back close to the Father, that I will confess that Jesus is the Son of God? Yeah, I'll confess Jesus is the Son of God. Well, I say, you know what? I really want to live my life for God. I don't want to do the things that God doesn't want me to do. That's called repentance. And then I say, I would like to make an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I would like to be baptized for the remission of my sins. I go down in the watery grave of baptism. I am baptized. The old man is dead. For those of you, we are doing a great conversation on the old man uh, in Wednesday night Bible class. I'm dead to the old man. I come up, I come up a new creature. I'm ready to go. And I'm endeavoring to live every aspect, Lord, of my life for God. To do the right thing. I just want <clears throat> to do the right thing. You've been a wonderful listening audience. I can't wait to get through the rest of the things that we do here in the Church of Christ. It's biblically based. It is what the Bible says. Psalm number 690.